Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Expats in Azores. I am your host with my good friends here, Brad and Jocelyn Majors. We actually met through Rotary International, um, and uh, we, that's how we started our friendship, and we've continued it since then. I want to have them uh, on the show today because they have a really great, unique story and how they came to the Azores, and to hear what they are actively doing here on the island. So, Brad and Joss, thanks so much for being on our series today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, um, let's start with you, Brad. Uh, tell us about how you discovered the Azores. Sure. Um, well, Joss and I had, had thought as we were retiring that, uh, or looking at retirement in about a year, uh, we thought, let's, um, do we want to sit around and play golf or in, in Greenville, South Carolina, or would we like a little more of an adventure? And we both thought we really wanted to do something that was just completely interesting and new for us. So we started looking at a lot of different um, uh, publications and and destinations we came down to really two one was Nicaragua uh -huh. which we thought was interesting and it had a close proximity to the southern US if we needed to get back for yeah. family and then um, the actually the second one was was Portugal and a friend of mine who had grown up on Santa Maria uh, said that we should uh, really look at the Azores and that's that's kind of how we came to look at it. Wow. Now, did you take a trip out here, like, to visit before you, like, located here? Yes. We, we, we took a trip here, um, and we, we, we took a trip first to the mainland. Okay. Spent about a week over there. Um, the, the joke was that I liked every place, and, and uh, Jocelyn kept saying, well, we've got a few more to see, honey. We've got a few more to see. <laughs> and finally, at the end of a week, we came here and spent five days, and this was the point where she, we, were, we were parked at a Miraduro, and she looked over at me and said, I think this is where I want to live. Oh, nice. That's great. What, um, so basically you found it through like searching, uh, you know, different places to live. What was, was it because you were like tired or you say, like, I don't want to be in the U.S. long term. I want to find someplace new. Like what sparked the desire to move out of the United States? Uh, yes, we had, um, when, when we were approaching retirement, we did want to have a new adventure. And so yeah. we researched many different countries and I'm an accountant. So yeah. I did the spreadsheet thing. Yeah. Climate, cost of living, healthcare, safety. Right, right. And um, then we were able to narrow it down to those two countries, Nicaragua and Portugal. And um, we just wanted to do something completely different. And we had been living in one city for quite a few years. And that's what we wanted to do. Yeah, because uh, also the Azores is a launching point for Europe. Yeah, true. So we can true. travel anywhere from here. Right, right. And have you been able to explore Europe by any chance since you've been here? Or, well, I mean, I know we're in the middle of COVID, but prior, or, or do you plan on it afterwards? Definitely afterwards, yes. Yeah. We've been trapped here because of COVID. Yeah. But we have big plans. We had to cancel our plans when yeah. COVID came along. So right. we're looking forward to that. What's your next destination in Europe you want to go to when everything opens up? I think we're looking at probably Paris and Amsterdam, mm -hmm. maybe a bit of Spain. Nice. Um, so get over to France, move up to Paris. Yeah. Went over to Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, I've got a guitar teacher that's there, oh, nice. uh, Robin Nolan, and then and then maybe come back through Spain. Nice. How uh, when when you decided to make the move here, did you just were you the type to say, oh, I'm getting rid of everything and I'm, you know, I'm just moving to Portugal and that's it, or was it like gradual? <laughs> <laughs> This is a discussion in our marriage. Oh, um, yeah. my, it's the right thanks, question to ask. Thanks a lot for bringing it up, Nathan. <laughs> well, initially we planned to sell everything and come over, but okay. life got very busy the last six months that we were in the States. And I said, let's just go. And we still have our house there. My okay. parents are there. Our children okay. are there. And gradually we've been um, cutting ties there. Okay. But it wasn't sell everything and come over here. We okay. didn't bring a container. We came over with two suitcases. Wow. And get all the guitars. Right, right. Yeah. Got to have the guitars. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the music just you know, takes you to another level. <laughs> it makes things better. <laughs> um, okay, so it was a gradual, it's been a gradual thing for you guys. Because we know there's some people who just said, hey, I'm all in. Yeah. You know, like, for example, uh, Remy, when I was talking to her yesterday, she said, I'm just going, I got to do this. I'm yeah. all in, you know. Yeah. So some people have made that decision and other people have been gradual. Um, which I think either way is fine. So what, um, what has been your, when you first got here, what were the most like difficult, difficult parts about when you first got here to a place like you've never been to before? 
Well, it was interesting. Um, I had lived overseas before. Okay. Brad had never lived overseas before, okay. so I knew that he would have different adjustments. When we first arrived, um, the language was a everyone spoke English or that we needed to speak English to and, the, and Ponte Delgada did. Okay. But just being around the language and not knowing how to work through the system and the different offices for yeah. immigration, um, it took a lot of e energy and time and just figuring out, oh, our hot water is on a hot water tank and yeah. we have to refill it and hook right. it up or being in the shower and suddenly the water's ice cold, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just different cultural things like that. Um, those were those were the big biggest. What about you? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that um, the, the language presented a little more of a challenge once we left Ponte Delgada because okay. when we were in Agudal and here, um, it not you don't have quite as many um, English language speakers. Sure. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, um, I, f I find that the uh, island really welcoming, and mm. and they seem to try to help you figure out what you need. I, I Several times we've been looking for something and someone stopped us on the street to help us. Yeah. Uh, we saw that in Lisbon. When we were in Lisbon, we've seen it here several times. Yeah. Oh my gosh, one, one guy changed our flat tire and yeah. it wouldn't take <laughs> a cent for it. He right, just right. said, hey, have a nice day yeah. in, in, in American. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the American phrase, yeah, yeah. have a nice day. Yeah. Um, so I I don't think there's been a huge adjustment, no. um, okay. but I, I think part of it is the government welcomes us mm. and the people individually welcome us. Yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah. uh, it, you know, I think in terms of an adjustment, probably we miss our family and, mm. and wish they would all move here. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and we miss some ethnic foods that we, that we can't get. Sure. Uh, that we can't get here. We, yeah. we love Indian food. Indian food, yeah. Lebanese yeah. food. Right, right. Um, we love more Mexican and Chinese, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but gosh, there's there's not a lot to miss about America sure. with with the people here yeah. seeming to just be so glad you're here. Yeah, that's great. Now, in when you first moved out here, you mentioned the city in Punta Delgada. Did you first move into the city first? We, we had um, leased a place for six months just okay. to find our way around. Sure, okay. And um, it, at that time, tourism was really peaking, and we were we have our dog. We brought him with us yeah. from the States. We weren't able to find a rental that would take a dog, so that's why we ended up buying a, okay. a house. Okay, okay. So you've lived in the city, and now we're here in Villa Franca, which is one of the you know, more popular sit, uh, villages out, uh, outside of the city, uh -huh. um, and it does attract a lot of expats. My question is, what have you liked more? You've lived in two different you know, uh, suburbs. So, what, what, which place have you liked more? Well, I, I think um, we loved being in Ponte Delgada just to be able to learn our way around. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, everybody needs to know their way around Ponte Delgada yeah. if you live on San Miguel. Yeah. We we liked Agudalto um, there because we had some fantastic neighbors. Yes. Okay. Our neighbors were so accommodating. I mean, they would bring us food and tell us if we left our light on. Oh, and nice, nice. I mean, they, they're just the nicest, nicest people. Um, I think what we've probably liked uh, about Villafranca is you can walk anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and and that's that's a nice thing when you're getting yeah. a little bit older, like Jocelyn is. Have you noticed that this, like, the, do you find that the island is very walkable? Like, I don't mean from one side of the island to the other, but like just in, in every village, everything's walkable. Have yes. you noticed that? Like, yes. even in the city? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there, were a few, there were a few more hills in Aguadalta. Yeah. But I'll tell you here, you can walk everywhere in Villa Franca. Right, uh, right. There are grocery stores close by. Yeah. Uh, Mac and I walk the, the uh, shore all along the marina and, and around. So, right. I mean, there's great. I mean, this, this Villa Franca in particular is very, very walkable. Yeah. But and I find the whole island is. Yeah. And this is a very beautiful area. I'll show some clips here in the, in the B roll. But it's just an absolutely great location because you're so close to the water and the marina and activities and yes. you're not far from the city either. Nothing yeah. is far from the city. Right. No. It's not even that far. So that's great. Um, after you settled in and you've, you know, you, you're in Ponce Delgada and now you're settled here, what's been like your day to day like, you know, what do you, what did you find about like getting active in? First of all, I do want to say 
I had a pleasure and, and enjoy the walks that you guys do. And I mean, you guys found places I didn't even know about. And I've been coming here my whole life. <laughs> and I found places through Brad and Jocelyn that I was like, this place exists. <laughs> So I found that you guys were very knowledgeable and it, like got into things that maybe most locals wouldn't maybe take for granted. Mm. What what have you found that has been a part of your routine um, here while you live here on the island? Well, I'll say, um, you know, we we uh, joined the Portuguese language cafe. Okay. And um, that in that we met a lot of expats oh. that did, that were also looking to just figure out what's going on here. Okay. And and uh, and there were some local people that came yeah. to help us um, to help us uh, learn the language. So, you know, between having a mix of, of uh, Azorians that wanted to just help people find their way and expats that were more knowledgeable than we are. Um, it's it's led us to learn a lot, you yeah. know, and um, and that I think that's helped a lot. Do you want to add something to that? Do yeah. you rec do you recommend other people take like some Portuguese classes while they're here? Yes, I, I think learning the language is um, a, a courteous to the local people, yeah. um, and after a year, you sort of pick up things naturally. But taking a class really is helpful. Um, yeah. I took a class at the university. Okay. And. Um, I need to continue working on it. It's easy to get lazy, but yeah. it's been very, it was very helpful. And yeah. when we lived in Aguadalto and even here, um, not as many people speak English or understand English mm. as they did in, po in Ponte do Gala. Right. Um, we speak a mix of Portuguese, English and Portuguese. <laughs> Portuguese. And it's actually, and sign language. I and love it's very that. Yeah. effective. But yeah. Uh, it's been great to learn some new. Even Brad, he he, he uh, his first word he loved was sobre mesa dessert. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah sobre mesa. Yeah. He's expanded the <laughs> my, my pronunciation is impeccable. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so great. Sobre mesa. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. All right. So Portuguese classes. Um, what what does your day to day look like here now that you've you know relocated? What do you guys find yourself like doing on a regular basis that maybe you weren't doing before in the U.S. Um. We, we walk a couple of days a week, uh, hiking through Pinal de Paz, mm -hmm. and, and really enjoy that with our friends. You've, you've been a part of that experience, and, yeah. and it's, it's a great experience. Um, we've done some other hikes that were, that were a little more ambitious, and, mm -hmm. and that's been fun. We hang out around town. Did you do um, hiking like more in the U.S., or is it more since you've been here? More since, since we've, been, we've here. been here. Okay, yes. yeah. So that's, that's definitely something that's changed. What is, has that been... Because um, I find that a lot of expats I talk to, they really like the greenery, the beauty, mm -hmm. the beauty of the island. Um, is that something that people should definitely like tap into? And what's been your favorite spot so far? Um, I, I I think if you shouldn't come here if you don't like nature. Yeah, well, that's a good I point. mean, yeah. I, I I told someone I said they they were thinking we were like a tropical island that we hung out on the beach and drank. You know, yeah. uh, my ties all day. Yeah, my ties all day. Yeah, <laughs> and I said this isn't that. Sure. But if you if you really love a natural environment, mm. you know the Azores works very hard at ma not only ma having that but maintaining that. Yeah. And um, and I think that's why someone needs to be thinking about that if they come here because there's so much opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. But but there aren't waiters running around with trays sure, with, right. the, with your various yeah. island drinks right, right. going on here. Um, and I think that may sound good for a week's vacation in the Caribbean, but most people don't want to live their lives doing nothing but that. Sure. Um, so I think that you, you really ought to appreciate nature. We, we did, but we didn't do nearly as much of it as we do here. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that is a, an important part of the life here and one that we, we really like. Yeah. Um, but I think also um, we were part of the community. We had a great church in, mm. in uh, Greenville and, and were involved with some nonprofits. But I think here we're even trying, e even on a deeper level, to be involved in the community. Yeah. Um, and and that's, there's an opportunity here for, for expats to play a role right. in doing that. Yeah, and let's talk about that a bit now because that's actually how we met through uh, Rotary. I remember. I was introduced through Max, actually, who we were sharing the co-working space down at the uh, office. And uh, he said, oh, have you heard of Rotary? You know, and I was like, yeah, I know Rotary. Is there one here? Well, I, I knew there was, but I'm like, is there one here that's English? And he's like, oh, well, there's this guy, Brad, who's trying to start one. And I was like, oh, sure, I'll go down. And I remember that room was packed, like, with, like, 30 or 40 people. That was, that was so great, like, to see. 
it was the first time out of all my life being here that I saw this many people that weren't Portuguese all in one room. Mm -hmm. So I was excited because I was like, wow, you know, I've been here a while, been coming here my whole life, but I never saw that many expats yeah. at the in the room at the same time. So I was like, wow, this, this is growing. This is really nice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about Rotary. I know you had a history in that. Um, how long have you been in Rotary? Well, counting this, this year we're in, 20 years. I had wow. done 19 in the U.S. and, wow. and this year. Um, my dad was a Rotarian probably for about 50 years. Wow. And so I grew up knowing that Rotary could play a big role in a community yeah. and be a real force for good. Yeah. So when I got here, I, I missed that mm. sense of, of doing for others and that sense of friendship that you get in Rotary. Mm. Um, making business connections uh, wasn't quite as important to me now, which, which in, in a number of Rotary clubs for someone who's younger and doing business, you do make, you do make do some important networking. Right. Um, and the other, the third thing I think is really important in, in Rotary that it offers is learning about your community with speakers, generally every, every meeting that mm -hmm. tell you some other aspect about your community. Yeah. So I thought just meeting the expats that I had met and the Azorians that I met, that we might be able to start a club that would be English speaking. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, but also be, my, my goal is to be 50% Azorian and 50% expats. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the, um, you've got people who know the island well enough to know the, the important issues that, that might need a little help from, from yeah. Rota Rotary and right, Rotarians. Right, right. So that's, that's kind of what prompted me to, to do it, having just the general benefit of Rotary. and. Um, and, and knowing that the, there's a very good club here, and, and it's the Rotary Club on Delgado. They, they all speak English, but they speak, they speak Portuguese yeah. in their meetings. And they were very nice the neat times I've been there to, um, to, to help me to understand what they were talking about. Yeah. But clearly, they were going to generally speak Portuguese. So I talked to, to um, Ilda Bratz here, who yeah. is a former district governor, and she told me that they would very much welcome having... Um, having another club, so I started canvassing to see see who might be involved. Well, I'll tell you what. Now you have a reputation of uh, oh, Brad, yeah, the Rotary guy, right? <laughs> who I was talking to in town, and I'm like, oh yeah, have you met Brad uh, Majors? And he's and they're like, oh yeah, that's the Rotary guy, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so your your reputation is preceding you in, 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 the, in the city. <laughs> no, that's great. That's good. Um, so. What has been your experience so far with Rotary from the United States and here, like with locals? Because now it's, you know, different people, different communities. What's been your experience so far with that? Well, I think that uh, at first I probably didn't didn't define Rotary exactly for, for some people. And we, we had some people that had general interest in, and they and they departed later. Um, my idea is to, was to, to build a club that was as I said, half Azorian and half expat, mm -hmm. and also to, to, to try to achieve having 50% females in the club, 50% okay. um, women, because Rotary has traditionally not done as well in getting female leaders to, to join Rotary. Okay. I mean, they were exclusive for a while, and yeah. then, so that was a mistake, and, and mm -hmm. so now we've got a lot of catching up to do, but that's kind of been our goal since we've been here, is mm -hmm. to have half women Leaders. In I actually think that's the case, though, right? Isn't that? I we we I think we're six and four now. Oh, okay. And I have two Azorian women waiting in the wings. As soon yeah. as COVID calms down, yeah, I believe they're going to join. So yeah. that will help us from a female yeah. standpoint, right. And from the Azorian standpoint, yeah. and and they both work in healthcare. Okay. So that'll be. That's why they can't join right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. What um what has been your uh, favorite part about the island? Like your, like is it the food? Is it the weather? Is it the well, not a lot of traffic? <laughs> What's been your favorite part, both of you? Joss, you want to share? Um, it's very peaceful and calm. the The main thing, the people are wonderful and and so friendly and welcoming and helpful. Brad has said that, and I just can't reemphasize that. Um, we love the food. the fr The food is so fresh. That's so true. Yeah. And um, natural. Uh, yeah. The markets are amazing. We actually have a truck that goes by selling bread, and yeah. you can run out and buy a, a bread hot off the hot, hot out of the oven. Yeah. Um, 
all of those things we, we've enjoyed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your favorite. Uh, you know, I th I'd say the people, too. Um, I have enjoyed getting deeply involved in the music scene here. Mm -hmm. And um, night before last Thursday night, we met, I'm in a fol folklore group, and we're playing in church on Sunday. Oh, nice. um, this, Sunday? We, this Sunday? This oh. Sunday in Aguadal. So, oh, cool. uh, so we're, we're going to play. And I've also started a blues band called I Got the Blues. Okay. And, and we did an, a, um, a streaming uh, concert on New Year's Eve from, um, from uh, Jazz, Lava oh. Jazz. Okay. And, um, and they tell us we're going to be back playing once a month when, when COVID is over. So, you know, I'm really excited about getting to know musicians right, right. here. Um, and, um, you know, there's a, there's a special kind of music here called Fado, mm. which I completely adore. I, yeah. I call it Portuguese blues. Yeah. And uh, it's such a beautiful music. Yeah. And, and I, I love that about the Portuguese people. Yeah, yeah. And the, I mean, it's sort of the soul of Portugal is embodied in Fado music. Yeah, that's so true. I grew up, I grew up with my dad, like, deep in Fado. It's like... I, I mean, whether he was singing it a cappella or he was playing Amalia in the background, yeah. I mean, I grew up with it. So uh, it, even growing up in the United States, we always had that, you know, that playing in the background. And seeing it here live is so much different and so much more powerful. Yeah. It really, it's emotional too. It's like, whoa, you know, it's, it's unique. So you, yeah. you don't even have to understand the words right. to, yeah, to I mean, hear, yeah. you know, to get that right. kind of feeling in your chest yeah. that says, Someone's heart is breaking. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I just, it recalls what my mom says. Oh, don't put on that sad music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear her say that. She's always she's always mocking the music, but no, yeah. it's it's something that you know I definitely grew up um, hearing either my dad singing it a cappella, you know, or um, playing in the background. You know, it was something that we grew up with. Uh, another question I have for you is someone who's considering like they're looking for a place like if you think back in the time where you were looking or Nicaragua or Azores or Portugal where where should we go um, what would you tell someone who's in the hunt right now looking for a place to go what would you suggest to them and why would you tell them to come here um, our first step was to read a lot of books on international living mm. and then um, contact people who lived in the different countries and just pick their brains. We've made some good friends d that way as well. Yeah. And of course, the old spreadsheet and yeah. part of its left brain and doing yeah. pr weighing pros and cons, and then visiting. Yeah. You have to visit. But, but, well, we felt we needed to visit and, sure. and and see how it felt, the feel of it. Landing here, that first day, we felt it. This is it. Yeah. No doubt that we were going to move here. So I think um, some people though they just look at uh, look at the Google. It's like, are those photographs retouched <laughs> no those are that's how it looks you say i'm in right it is there are some great photos out there yeah how about for you brad if someone was looking at you know they were contemplating this place or that place why what would you tell them about coming well here? It's, it's funny we uh, um we we met um i, I was t telling someone um that you know not only does does the government welcome expats mm -hmm. here but the people welcome expats here. Mm. And, and um, that's really important that everyone you meet seems to want to help you out. Yeah. And, um, you know, I grew up in the South, and we talk about Southern hospitality, but um, the South ain't got nothing on the Azores. Oh, really? So, oh, I, uh, you know, we, they've set a very high bar really? for, for, for welcoming people here. And, um, and I, I would say you, you, if you come here and you don't feel that, then go, go find somewhere else. But as I've said, we've had people help us places. We've had people change our uh, tire. We've had so many Azorians stop to make sure we're okay. Wow, that's great. And, and that, that just makes you think, I don't ever want to leave this right, place. Right. That's yeah, the other thing about island life is that um, I think 10 years ago, they had there were fewer modern conveniences here with sure. shopping and sure. mainly that that's a big thing restaurants yeah. and now some of those have been brought in and so it's yeah. not moving into a totally foreign culture. That's true. So it's yeah. easy to transition. Yeah, the, this island, you know, I've been coming here since I was very young, five years, four years, and um, 
definitely seen a lot of changes. I mean, paved paved streets now in almost every village is it's such a blessing. It's like, oh, okay, paved streets. Yes. You know, and some of the little things like, you know, um, in, like you said, in regards to like restaurants, having, you know, napkins was almost an inconvenience. You had to walk around with your own, you know, teepee in your bag because you never knew if they were going to have any. It was very like, what's going on here? But, you know, especially if, you know, growing up in the U.S., but it's definitely modernized a lot. It's definitely, there's a lot more going on here. And great internet access. If you experience great internet all the time, yeah. at least I have. I yeah, mean, it's been, absolutely. It's been great so far. Good. But, yeah. You know, we went to the mall yesterday. Yeah. And we were meeting our, our friend Matt. And, um, and you know, I challenge anybody, the average mall, walk around the average mall in America and walk around the mall here in Ponte Delgada. And yeah. they're... It's equal. At, yeah. You know, at, at least as nice as mo- what you're going to find in sure. most most cities and towns yeah. in in the U.S. So, yeah. um, I mean, it, it, you come here and you look here and you think, wow, what a beautiful pastoral setting. But we've got some pretty darn sophisticated, a lot of sophisticated yeah. um, aspects nice. to this island, right. too. Yeah. That's so true. Good stuff. Any last words for someone who's clicking around on the Internet looking for <laughs> this place to come? <laughs> Any uh, last tips? They, they should really come and look at the Azores. I, I think in terms of, of a great place to spend spend part of your life or the rest of your life or, mm. or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Great. Ditto. Ditto. All right. So we're gonna put some links in the description. Check those out. We're gonna put links to the Rotary uh, group. We got a Facebook group. We'll put the links down there in the description and some other uh, tips and recommendations that we'll, we'll put your best restaurant down there in the, the description. How about that? Okay. Yeah, we'll put their favorite restaurant in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks, Brad and Joss, for Absolutely. being on the episode. Thanks, thanks. 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 Thanks.